Eventually he ran, he ended up in Red Lake. Well, it's interesting to know that <coughs> Beltrami, he had a penchant for languages, and I assume that he maybe picked up some Ojibwe language along the way, and somehow they communicated. And Beltrami you know, said, I'm looking for the source of the father of the waters of Mississippi. Can you help me? Well, they knew what it was. I mean, they knew the land, they knew the territory, and they said, sure, we'll take you there. We'll take you there. So he's now in Red Lake, and in the area of Red Bee, there is a river that flows from Pupaski Lake to, to, uh, to Red Lake, and it's called the Mud River. It's that river is still there today. Now, in those days, it probably was a wider river. Today, it's kind of more or less a creek. But nevertheless, it's still there. And so here is a Beltrami with being helped by some Native Americans going north up the Mud River from Red Lake. They come to Pupaski Lake, or Mud Lake, and then they come to this heart-shaped lake called Lake, at that time, it wasn't named for, it was just another lake. Beltrami climbs on top of Mount Vista, uh, on Buena Vista, I still Buena Vista, looks down and sees this heart-shaped lake. After exploring it for a while, he sees that the water flows north to Red Lake, eventually into Hudson Bay, flows south into Little Turtle Lake, Big Turtle Lake, eventually down the Gulf of Mexico. He declares this the Julian source of the Mississippi, the northernmost source of the Mississippi. Well, after this, he makes a few mistakes, which I'll talk about in a minute, but he ends up back in Fort Snelling, telling his journey. He eventually goes to the Gulf of Mexico, New Orleans, Mexico, and like four or five years later, ends up back in Italy. So that's, in a nutshell, that's the story of Giacomo.